After you have created your part in SOLIDWORKS, make sure that you save it as an STL file. When you are ready to print, open up the MakerBot software. Go to File, Add, and find your STL file. Notice that it has a default setting on how it adds the file. You want to make sure that you move it to the platform. In this case, the box is facing the correct direction with the bottom of the box at the bottom of the platform. However, this isn't always the case. You can turn and move your object by highlighting it and then selecting different X, Y, and Z positions. Be careful with the Z position because if it hovers over the platform, that actually will cause the printer to fail. So move it back to on the platform, center. You can also turn your object. So for example, if the box was not facing up, but instead facing a different direction, we could have simply turned it using one of these buttons. You can also scale your object, but be really careful with this. It's fine if you want to make the object, for example, 50% of its original size, but if the different features uh, were of a specified dimension in SOLIDWORKS, all of those dimensions are going to change. So it's best not to use this tool unless you have an object where the size does not matter. You can also view the object from different angles to make sure that everything looks the way that you want. Finally, go to Settings. The right extruder is going to be the material that your box is printed out of. We're using PLA, but you can actually change that. Just make sure that the material in the printer matches what you select here. In general, you want to have the, uh, the raft on, and it can match the same extruder as you are using to build your box. The only time you want to turn the raft off is if you happen to have a super flat object with no ridges or bumps on it. Supports in general are best left off. You can have the right extruder also create supports, but they can be a huge pain to remove. Infill level can be moved up or down. The higher the infill, the more dense your object will be, but the longer it will take to print. So let's keep it back down at 7%. The number of shells is how many shells there will be in the outer layer. Again, you can increase the number of shells, but this will increase your print time. The layer height is the resolution of your object. The smaller this number, the finer the layers of material will be, but again, it will increase your print time. So let's just keep it at 0.25 millimeters. That's plenty fine for most people. Temperature should be at 230 degrees for PLA material. You may increase it slightly if you happen to be using the flex material for the print. You may also choose to heat the build plate. This allows the plastic to stick to the plate a little bit better because it'll sit, stay soft while it is extruding. Once all of your settings are done, save the settings. Export print file. This will give you an estimate of how long the print is going to take. It will also convert this file into a file that the printer can actually recognize. Notice that this particular print is estimated to take over eight hours. This is a very large print. Most of the time, it will only take one or two hours to print an object. It's also telling you how many grams of material it's going to use. This is helpful because if you only have a little bit of material left in the printer, you wouldn't want to print such a large object. If you're satisfied with the information, click Export Now. Notice it's going to save it as an X3G file. This is what you need to put into the printer. It cannot print or recognize an STL file.
Once the file has been saved, you can transfer it to the printer and begin your project.